when Jesus had came into the temple area, the chief priests and the elders of the people approached him, as he was teaching and saying, But what authority are you doing these things? Who have given you this authority? Jesus said to them and replied, I shall ask you one question, and if you answer it for me, then I shall tell you by what authority I do these things. Where was John's baptism from? Was it of heavenly or human origin? They discussed this among themselves and said, If we say it of heavenly origin, he will say to us, Then why don't you not believe him? But if we say it of human origin, we fear the crowd, for they all regard John as a prophet. So they said to Jesus in reply, We do not know. He said, He himself said to them, Neither I shall tell you, but what authority I do these things. The Gospel of the Lord. St. Augustine, in one of his sermons, makes a brilliant distinction to compare St. John the Baptist with our Lord. St. John the Baptist had presented himself, as the Gospel says, as the voice crying in the desert. The voice, says St. Augustine, one thing is the voice, and another thing is the word. The voice is air. If it does not carry content, the voice does not cease to be air, a cry, or simply a breath. It is the word, the content, the concept, says St. Augustine, that counts. Certainly, the word needs the voice to be able to reach the other and communicate the content. But once the voice with the content has reached the ear of the other, the voice disappears, the ear vanishes and dissolves, while the content remains in the other, to whom it is rich and remains, also says St. Augustine, in the one from whom it departed. He defines this content, that is, the message of Jesus, as the eternal word, I remember, how, how he made the title, how Mother Angelica wanted it to name the word that they do, Eternal Word, Eternal Word. Christ is the Eternal Word, and we must be the voice. St. John the Baptist was the voice, the voice that cried out in the desert, but he was the voice. St. Augustine continues saying in his sermon, St. John was humble, he was considered the Messiah, and he had said that he was, they could have believed him, but he was humble, he recognized that he was only the voice, and that the important thing was the word. Let us apply this to our reality, we priests must be the voice that transmits the eternal word, the word that does not change, the word that does not go out of fashion, the word that must not adapt to the world, because it is objective is to transform the world, not to adapt and submit to the world. The priest must be the voice that carries the word. John was necessary. The voice is necessary. The preacher is necessary. The priest is necessary. But I am not the word. The word is Jesus. And my voice must always carry the right word, which is the word of God, the word of Christ, the eternal word, and in the same way, speaking of priests, including, of course, the bishops and the Pope, in the same way, for example, catechists, theologians, we are the voice, we are not the Word, the content is Christ. It takes the medium of the instrument 
it takes the air emitted by someone who carries the message to another who hears in his bow ears, but the air dissolves once has reached the ear of the other. All of us, each one of us, from educators in schools, parents, catechists, priests, deacons, bishops, the Pope, all of us must feel and realize that we are only a voice and that what is important is Christ, the Word, and that He is the one who reaches, who touches the heart, who moves, who converts, who calls, who gives hope, who saves. Christ, eternal Word of God, immutable Word, untouchable, perfect Word, Christ is the one who must reign, and we must recognize the greatness of having been instruments, which is not small thing, but also the tiredness of being just that the instrument. If we are good instruments that carry the poise, we will have fulfilled our mission. If we pretend to be instruments that carry their own voice and disfigure the voice of the eternal shepherd, of the eternal word, if they disfigure this message, then we will be going against that destiny, against that purpose of which we were created. Let us ask the Lord to help us to always be the voice that cries out in the desert and announces the eternal word that is Christ. Amen.